Just before we start, I just wanted to mention one thing quickly. Uh, Hellas and Co. and Sporting Club Hellas are independent missions. They're both run solely by myself. So if you could like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, it would mean the world. Check out hellasandco.com. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to Hellas and Homies. I'm here with uh, the brother Marvs. Yes, sir. We're doing a rerun 2.0. Last time I had Marvs on was March 9th, mm. 2022. Exactly. Crazy, bro. Yes, it's uh, July, oh, June, fuck. June fourteenth now, yep. fifteen months to almost the day. Mm. Grateful to have you on, brother. My G, always, bro. Thanks what an honor. On. Thank you for having me here. And I'm, yeah, very excited. Yeah, let's run it back. Two point How cool is the um the upgrade, bro? Two seven project, bro. Two seven, bro. Shout out to the team, mate. Like they definitely got a lot of, I don't know, creativity going on around here, man. Like such a great space, and um, I don't know. Just props to them. Even just coming in here. Um, I don't know, man. It's just it's good for Western Sydney, you know. It's just good for um a lot of the creators, a lot of young fellas coming up, uh, needing a space of um just shooting or even podcasts or anything. You know what I mean? Um, these guys pretty much provide. So shout out to the Two Seven Project and everybody that's a part of it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's unreal, bro. Been here like I'm here once a week doing the clean and whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just kind of like helping out, and then I'm here once a week doing the pod as well. For sure, for sure. And but it's just nuts, like seeing it come to life. Like yeah. when I first came in here, it was just cement. So like you can imagine, just an empty factory. Yeah. And it was just cement, and then just watching each piece get put in to what it is now. Nothing like it in Penrith, bro. Who would have thought? Hundred eh? percent. Like growing up, I would never have picked this place <laughs> in Penrith. Now I'm part of it, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um. Bro, over the past 15 months, a lot has happened for my brother Marv's in front of me. 100%. Uh, second child on the way, which is very exciting. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and then also the release of Savage Poet, Side A and Side B, but yep. collectively an album. Yeah. Uh, and also Hood Bars, which is a massive move. Yep. And Got You, which I think, non biased, and I had this conversation with him before the cameras rolled, is his best song by far. For sure. And criminally underrated. Yep. Let's go back to the uh, first thing, fatherhood, most important thing. Yep. Um, how do you feel, bro? Bro, blessed, bro. Blessed, yeah. No other words, man. Um, bro, fatherhood in itself is so amazing, yeah. I mean, um, obviously it comes with its challenges and that, but for me, man, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying seeing my son grow up. Um, just sussing him out, you know, his little personality. Um, seeing him crawl to like walking. Um, from not talking to talking too much, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like this boy's growing up, and then, yeah, man, I'm just really enjoying. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying the whole family. Family and um, just fatherhood at the moment. Yes, it's yeah. blessed. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for the son, yep. he was on Savage Poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool, bro. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. It was only right, man. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to my son, Weston. Um, and in the we'll talk about Savage Poet now. Yep. You had an album listening party. Yeah. Uh, at Common House or Open Studio at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Savage Poet for me was like it was fucking cool. That first song, bro. That introduction. Yep. Is like a would you say like a Southern American type of like beat? Yeah, 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 pretty much. So, um, yeah, it's crazy too, like how it all ties in, because um, that was the Law Poet intro, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, like um, that that was shout out to my old man. That that was my old man's original beat. So that was like um produced by him, and I re I recorded that um back when I was little too, and I I just I remember I almost remember everything that was going on. That was recorded in my garage, um, back home in his when I was about yeah I don't know eight years old or something whatever age I was in, but. I mean, just looking at that back then and looking at um, the finished product of Savage Poet was um, it was a bit of an emotional ride for me, you know, because it's been such a journey. And especially for people that's either um, been doing this journey with me or following the music stuff um, or even just jumping on, I'm sure that they, I'm glad, I, I'm hoping that they got a glimpse of what my journey's been like, you know, so um, yeah, but man, Savage, um, the Lil Poet intro, definitely, definitely uh yeah, it definitely pulls some heartstrings sometimes yeah. every time I run it back. So, so wait, just to clarify, yeah. your dad produced that beat yeah. two decades ago. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yes, like in the early 2000s, right? Yeah. And then you've put that beat and that's the intro to your debut album. Yeah. Bro, nuts. Yeah, so that's the what intro. A full circle moment. Yeah, so obviously like um, Savage Pole, I'm, I'm not sure if you already know, so Savage Pole is, is the title, the name of my EP album, whatever you want to call it. But uh, Savage Poet was my dad's rap group back then, and I'm sure you. Uh, I'm pretty sure you remember. Yeah, uh, you I, mentioned. I, I, I spoke about that on the yeah. night. Yeah, of the um launch party. Savage Poet was the name of my dad's rap group. Shout out to all the uncles and the cousin that that was a part of it, and I was fortunate to be a part of that, and that's how I birthed my music career through there. I was miles back then, little miles, but like they called me Lil Poet back then, which was why that was Lil Poet intro. It's when I was a little kid. 
And then from the start of side A to side B, I sort of spoke about my whole journey from like trials, um, family stuff, um, how I think now, my mentality, my heart now, all the way from when I was a little kid till now. And that's why I ended on Savage Pole intro. So I started as Lil Pole. That was my way stepping into this game. And I finished as the man that I am now, a Savage Pole. So I felt like since then, when I was little, I was looking up and I was inspired by my old man. I was inspired by the crew, the family crew that we had then. And I was thinking, one day I want to be a Savage Pole. You know, I can't wait, I can't wait. And I guess even though that I am Miles now, my own artist, in my heart, I'm still that little kid cheering. They're like, man, I've, I've earned my shops to be a Savage Pole. Hence why it's a name, the outro, Savage Pole outro. So it's me now, from little me, speaking to um, existence, what I want to be, the dreams that I have, to older me now, wrapping it up in Savage Pole outro. Um, speaking about where I feel I belong in this industry now, um, the things that I had to do to overcome the battles that I went through, and yeah, this is where I'm at now. So Savage Pole outro, Lil Pole intro. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's how it all ties bro. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I honestly, I kind of forgot about all that, but it's coming back. No, to no, me. no. I remember yeah, you sure. mentioned it on the night. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so side A and side B, six songs each, aren't they? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uh, five, I think. It's five or six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them. Yeah. And it chronologically, but it listens really well. Mm. That's like my number one thing when I listen to like an album or even an EP. EP not as much. Yeah. Like if it's ten songs or more, I want to see like how it flows. For sure. I thought you killed it. I appreciate it. Bro. Um and yeah, the listening party that was there, there was a fair few artists from the area, which was cool. Yeah. It was cool to see like your family and friends there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um also like just local artists that you'd go on bar for bar with, you know, mm. like some of the boys that I met there, I didn't real I hadn't realized like they rapped as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um it was cool just to see like that group of people there just kind of hundred percent, yeah. All there to like li witness the music, listen to it. Yeah. Like, it was Unbelievable. Yeah, man. And I feel like um that's got to happen more often, man. Like, that's the beautiful thing about music. And I guess doing it with um a whole bunch of peers that's either on the same mission or on the same journey as you in the music industry. Hence why, like, I invited, like, you know, like, just from the top of my head, like, I think MA, uh, Michael Costa, yeah. um, Franny, VTA, like, just to name a few, you know? Like, these are a couple guys that um I invited to come through, plus a lot more. Yeah. Just to come through and, um yeah, I sort of, I don't know, I just feel like these moments should be celebrated together as... As peers, I guess, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all from the same side, Western Sydney, yeah, so we all celebrate and we all push the same area. So why wouldn't we celebrate each each win? Then, yeah, I feel like that was such a a, a good night, like just to celebrate the birth of Savage Poet, yeah. So yeah, Savage Poet itself. When was the idea first thrown out into the world? Um, when did it hit you like this is going to be a project? Like, bro, um, to be honest, I I, I was I was funny because they, they were speaking about this because the other day I was going through my notes. Looking at, I was looking for my like old old songs I couldn't find, you know, in the vault, and then I came past it. And I think it was two thousand and twenty. Two thousand twenty. So two years. All I had in my notes was um, Savage Poet EP, and then suss it out, structure it, get it done. That's all I posted on my notes. So I totally forgot about it. So I know since that day, two thousand and twenty, sometime, I had, like had that thought in my heart and in my mind too, like that I want to birth something with Savage Poet, and I mean it took what two years later or something. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think 2020, I definitely had something that I wanted to do. Because um, that was the proper project that I put forward after FOE GOA. Yeah. Yeah, which was my first little project, you know. And that was obviously a trial and error too. That was cool um, in terms of mixing, recording, structure, everything. But um, I feel like we really executed the Savage Pole one pretty well. Yeah. Um, Especially as an independent, you know, artist and that. Shout out to MK2. He pretty much tracked that whole thing. So, um. Yeah. Talented producer, right? Oh, 100 percent bro. That, that guy's man, he's crazy gifted, so yeah. Yeah, shout out to MK, man. He, he did his thing on there. He produced a couple of beats too. And yeah, just just did his thing. Especially at a young age. It blows my mind, man. But shout yeah, out to like him. my age, eh? Or younger. How old are you? Twenty three. Nah, he's younger. He's nineteen or something. Yeah, he's juicy's age. Yeah, juicy yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not yeah, yeah, juicy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <sighs> yeah bro. Talented, talented kid, bro. Hundred percent, man. There's a lot of talented kids, man. Like out there, like say, like Juicy, yeah. For example, man, like crazy. Yeah. The things that he's doing, the things that he's running up. Shout out to him, man. But um, yeah, it's just crazy that the talent out there in Western Sydney, man, is beautiful. And as an independent artist, what's it like releasing like a project that's that of that size? Stressful, bro. I wouldn't say it's stressful. Um, what's it called? No, actually, actually. Let me run that back. It, it definitely has some sort of stress with it. But I think knowing that there's no boundaries, there's no... There's a freedom to yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Like, there's no guidelines that we have to follow. Or there's no one that we have to run it by. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like with labels and that, um, you've got to run it by a certain person or there's a yes or no besides your yes and no. And um, 
I feel like that's where it sort of interferes with the art and the whole business side of things. Whereas I feel like that um, artists, independent and signed, should always have a full say over their project, you know? Like, if they genuinely believe that this stuff is about to go and that's what they think the world is going to, like, love in that, then by all means, they should do it. And I think that's why I really enjoyed the process of Savage Pulp. Because me and MK, we were just bouncing back and forth, like, in the studio. Like, a lot of that... No, the whole tape, that, that was all done out of his bedroom, too. Done out of my lounge. So it's, like, no fancy studio or nothing, but just the gems that came out of it. Um, People hear it and they think, wow, it's crazy how, how it all got put together sometimes. But, um, yeah, that's just the journey of it, man. And I guess that's why I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so... You killed it, bro. I appreciate like, it. Bro. Like, congratulations on releasing appreciate something it, yeah. so good. It means a lot, man. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I remember, like, listening to it and... um, oh, fuck it. You're going to have to forgive me. I've got brain fog. No, no, no. Do your thing, man. But when we were Easy, listening man. to it and um, make your money, make your bread lifestyle... Yeah, that, yeah break bread, yeah. Yeah. Bro, when sure. that first came on when I'm like... Because I was filming the event as well. Yeah. And taking photos and stuff. And then, like, when that first came on, I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. this is... Yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, real yeah. deal, right? This is what Marv's really capable of. 100%. You know, that was one of those songs where I was like, this is the Marv's I tell my friends about. Like, this is yeah. like full potential. This belongs what, with million plus streams and for stuff sure, like for that. For sure, for sure. But it was, a really, it was a really well executed <coughs> project. It was cool to see your son on the front as well. Yeah. And when we got there, the visuals you had. So for people wondering, like Open Studio at the time was like a uh, two, what would you say? Um, it was like two level factory, but the top level is open Studio, yeah. Yeah, out yeah. there. Um, two story, fucking hell. <laughs> two story studio. <laughs> but obviously half of the studios just open up, right? Mm. Um, so Marv's had the side that wasn't open where there's structure at the top story, putting a projector onto the wall where we could watch like yeah. a visualizer of your album, mm. which I thought was a fucking beautiful touch. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out to whoever put that together. Yeah, shout out to my older brother. He did that, yeah, yeah. So yeah shout And um that had shots of you as a kid, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then it had you walking around with your son. Yeah, no, yeah. So sort of yeah. Fuck. Little me then and then my son, yeah, sort of came full circle with everything. So yeah. Plus I had like footage of me and my old man. So yeah. Me and my old man, me when I was little, me and my son, and my son now is little, so full circle, yeah, bro. Hundred percent full circle. I love that everything. shit. And um yeah, it was just so cool to be there <clears throat> and then listening to Savage Poet as the days <clears throat> rolled on, just like going back and forth. Like go getters, I remember like yep. just putting that on repeat. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And just like listening to it. I was like, yeah, this is the shit. And for an independent artist, bro, it was a massive achievement. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think people realise when you don't have a label behind you mm. and you're organising everything and orchestrating everything yourself, yeah. how difficult it can be to 100%, really yeah. execute on your ideas and your mm. vision, you know? And you managed to do that. Mm. Appreciate it. Massive yeah. achievement. And after <coughs> Savage Poet, how was, the re- how was the feedback, first of all? It was good, man. To be honest, um, yeah, uh, obviously, um, just like any other artist, you know, like I strongly believe that um, it, it should have done a lot more than what, what it could have or yeah. what it did but um bro like like i said man like there's no regrets in this game that we do you know so like we release with the highest hopes and just wish that it does well and whatever it does bro like the numbers or the response um i, I just believe that that's that's exactly what's supposed to happen with that project yeah so i'm pretty blessed with the outcome of yeah of the streams of the listeners shout out to everybody that moves with it and still bumps it to this day you know um yeah like you said it's not an easy journey as an independent artist uh bro bro yeah, we really are here. So. In hindsight, is there anything you would change about the release? No. I think you could have done with a video straight after. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, actually, actually, no, 100%. Yeah, so that was actually a big thing. Because um, remember how you were just saying, like, there's a lot of stress, a lot of um, what's called challenges that come with releasing a project or even just a normal single release without a label. Yeah. And um, at that time, bro, like, I think I was... What was I doing? I think I was, nah, to be honest, I think I was just scraping, bro. I was, I was, I was genuinely scraping coin, bro. Like, yeah. I was like, fuck, like, I really want to get this project out. And I, like, in my heart, I really wanted to push with visuals. I just don't have the funding for it at the moment, you know what I mean? And yeah. this is real life stuff. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely being serious. So, that's the whole reason why I couldn't put out a video in that. So, a lot of people say, like, oh, you should have. And, like, I know in my head that I, I should have. I know in my head I, I could have and I would have if I could. But, um, yeah, just at that time. Bro, yeah, you know, like finances just wasn't up at the moment. I'll be straight up. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it, you know, because, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess a lot of people don't really speak on that stuff or they just make some sort of excuse like, oh, no, 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 you know, I was busy. Or, no, bro, like, yeah, for myself, I could genuinely say, bro, like, yeah, I just wasn't in the financial state right then and there. But, um, yeah, no regrets still, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can't live I felt like, yeah, 100%, because then I'll be beating myself up for the rest of my life wishing that I did that. And, uh, yeah, I just think that life should be lived with no... uh. Could have, should have, would have, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. 
And then after that, as if you couldn't make a better step, I think it was the best step you could have made. Yeah. Was you went on hood bars. 100%, yeah. And I'll talk about my friend Marv's here. Come on. <laughs> First time we met was in Open 2021. Yeah. Back end of 2021. Myself, Cameron, shout out Cameron. Yes, sir. Fez, who's probably best bar for bar I've ever yep. seen live. Like, for sure. You, you as well. Mm. And, um, and yeah, but like Fez, like he's a poet, not a rapper type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> yourself. Yep. Red Honcho, mm. AF. Yep. And we and Esky was there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I like I was like, fuck, I want to be like Esky when I'm older, you know? Like he, sure. just the way he sat in on the sessions and he yeah. was just like, Esky's one of the goats. But we were sitting there and you guys would put on a beat or Cameron would chuck on a beat mm. and the your ability to just go mm. on a beat mm. and and then when you were showing your vault out as well, when because all the boys got their vault out while we we're shooting some sh- uh, yep. shirts and hoodies and stuff. The boys were putting out their own vault and we made like a little video out of it. That was remarkable, bro. Like mm. the way you could just go. Yep. And then I'd always thought Marv's belongs on a freestyle platform. Yeah. That's where he'll get his most flowers. Hood bars comes out. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Hated or love it bar was sick. Mind you. Yeah. And the way the music changed in the background as well. Yeah. Like the instrumental. Or MK. Or MK. Yeah. yeah. Shout, fucking shout out MK, man. <laughs> yeah, shout out That's man. some talent, man. Because sure. it, it seamlessly like it's, that would be so hard to do. 100%. Yeah. To make the beat change and then come back. Yeah. Back to the instrumental. Um, and then also Chubbs, shout out Chubbs, good friend yes, of mine. Sir, that yeah. Chubbs vibe, bro, I, like, I was listening to it and I like laughed out loud. I was like, yeah. fuck, I never thought Chubbs would get on a fucking hip hop yeah, song. Yeah, wow. well. It was a it was mad shout out. Um, and yeah, how was that, bro? How is, how, what is it like doing a hood bars? Nah, bro, it was good, man. It was very exciting. Um, what's it called? Yeah, even the way that I, I got on there, it was, it was crazy. Um, I, didn't, I didn't approach him and... Um, I don't think I was on the cards of, of jumping on the hood bars. But um, I think from some of the previous guys that he had shot, I think he was sort of just um, asking for reference, like, who do you reckon should jump on hood bars? And um, from from memory, I think a couple of the artists that went before me, they re- referred me. Yeah, so um, he sort of approached me and I was pretty, like, I was pretty excited. I fired down, like, it's, it's solid, you know. I've never been on the hood bars before, obviously. Any sort of, like, platform where we could just spit, like, a solid 16 or 32. And... um. Yeah, but I was like, five years old, let's do it. So it was pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Yeah, the bro that, that runs it, shout out to him. A lot of work, like I said, goes in with it, you know what I mean? So the work that he puts on behind the scenes, nobody sees it, bro. But just the setting up the lights, cruising by himself, setting up his cameras, doing all sort of takes. The editing, like, bro. Yeah, bro. Editing. All that, the editing, and like even out in the rain, like you don't know if it's going to rain in that. So props to him for um, putting it all together. Not just for me, but for all the other artists that went through hood bars and the ones to come, you know, so, um, but for myself, bro, it was, it was very fun, yeah, I, I feel like it's the same sort of thing, like, you just get a blank canvas, it's sort of like, yeah, you got hood bars dropping in this state, like, go hard, and it's sort of like, bro, you just rip in there, you know, you sort of, um, it would be hard for you, eh, because you'd <coughs> have so many things, like, from the vault and just on the top of your mind to pick from, Oh, for bro. sure, yeah, 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 <clears throat> but that's the thing, like, even then, I was like, fire, like, should I just, like, go back and um, revisit one of the verses that I haven't used it or whatever, but, it's, I don't know. I just felt like I had to come with something fresh. So hence, I, hence why I had to rewrite the whole thing. And I just wrote a whole new verse in that. And I enjoyed the process of it too. Like I said, shout out to MK. I can't shout out to him enough, eh? But he produced that beat. Um, Obviously took care of the masters and that. And even the way, like you said, the little effects. Yeah, with um, the money stuff and the hate or love it instrumental dropping in that. But that's ideas that um that we sort of fed off each other, you know. And thought this would be cool if we chuck it in and that. So we did that. And um yeah, I think it was just a fun for fun process of getting that out. Yeah, so Hood Bars was pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, that's mad. <clears throat> um, and then the next song that comes out is Got You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With well, All Black Alby. All Black Alby. Let's get it, yeah. Bro, what a song. Yeah. Like, I, I listen to it, right? So I listen to all the artists locally. Like, I just listen to them on Friday morning, whatever's news, re- like, is newly released. It'll yeah, come yeah, up yeah. in um on Spotify <clears throat> release radar. Mm. So I listen to everyone's. Sometimes I'm like, fuck, we could be doing a lot better here, but maybe it's just not my style. Yeah. Yours comes on, I'm like, fuck it. I got Jade off. I was like, fuck yeah, Marv's hopping on. And I thought the other guy would be like a heavy, I thought it'd be like a very much um like two heavy spitters going back and forth, you know? Right. Kind of like what Pistol Pete and Enzo do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got excited. And then it comes on, I'm going, holy shit, like this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did that song come about, bro? Bro, so we had that one in the vault since like 2021 or something too, like a while ago, bro. So, um, We've been in the talks um, to be doing some tracks on that too. Shout out to All Black, LB2 and the whole Fly North team. But um, yeah, man, I, I just, the first time I heard of LB, I was like, fire, like, this guy's something different, you know? And 
this guy's unheard of and I feel like he he deserves a lot more recognition than what he's got now. So and still bro, so we sort of just chopped it up and then yeah, went back and forth, took a bit of time and then we realized that um when we hit each other up and we said, Oh, you'd be keen to do a track together, like, you know, like we just sort of clicked or we gelled and we found some sort of sound, you know, that we were rocking with and we could both fit in so perfectly, I feel. Yeah. Which was like the outcome of what I got you and that. So um yeah, it was I don't know, it was dope. The concept of it was dope. Um the way he delivered to on there, it was just like, just perfect, you know what I mean? Like, everything felt so perfect. Because the thing with Albie, bro, like, the way he spits is so raw and so, you can hear the accent, you know, sort of thing. Like, you can hear the, sort of like the G in them, you know what I mean? But it's not too overpowering with the track to the point where it's like, this guy doesn't sit on this track. Like, he sits more on the rapping songs. Because he comes so smooth with it, like, the way he delivers, yeah, um, even the lyrics and that. Like, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, it's such a cool... I guess process of making I'm um, got you, yeah. So. Yeah, I thought the way you delivered your bars as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonically, it was like perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it, like, like, and we discussed this before, you know. Like, um, I think the main thing was, it, it wasn't to like. There's some songs where you really gotta think and look back and think like, no, oh, no, nah, like, I wanna go hard out on all the bars, you know, come out with the best of the best. But that track, it was mainly just like, uh, no, nah, no, nah, let's 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 really just dumb it down, but still still keep it a vibe. So. Yeah, uh, like I said, I just enjoyed the whole process of it. So yeah, got you. Yeah, out now on all platforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. bro, fucking, it deserves so much more than it's hundred percent. Yeah, I suppose that's where a label might help one day. Eh? Yeah, for sure. And like, obviously, there's like people that um do a lot of pitching stuff to like playlists and all that stuff. Um, there's people that do explain that. To. Uh, explain that to someone listening who might not know what like that is. Oh yeah, so I think it's just like um, just like I think it's like got something to do with the marketing, obviously. The people that do um the Someone marketing, the labels, yeah, 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 or labels, not like distributors, they, yeah. So like those people, they actually um, I think they they have certain fees now where you can pay them maybe two hundred fifty or something for like I don't know, one track, and they'll be able to push it to like certain Spotify playlists that you might not be making it on. They'll be able to um push it to other areas in the media platforms where you won't be able to push it. Mm-hmm. So at the move at the moment, I haven't um reached out or I haven't did anything yet with any of those people. Um, a lot of my stuff's been moving organically, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that's probably why it doesn't get the recognition that it needs or that, that we think it deserves. But, um, yeah, I think it's sort of like, uh, I don't know. Myself, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a bad thing or a good thing, but I feel like I'm just not too phased with like, a, um, oh, like I need the songs to hit a million streams today or tomorrow. I'm sort of just like, man, I'm not, like, I genuinely enjoy this. So that's why I'm like, nah, let's just run it. Let's just drop it, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to spend another 250 or 500, even though I should. Um, and I definitely think it's going to be coming soon, like in future projects and that. But just for the stuff that I've released before, like, yeah, I sort of like, I can see that I've did it um organically with one of my other songs and some of the other past few songs. So why can't I do it with the rest of the songs that I've been doing now, you know? Yeah. Until the time's right, until the pocket's right, you know, the money's coming in there. Obviously, we're going to make some moves then, but... Until then, bro, I think I just got to be real and like whatever suits me best at this point in life, then that's, that's how I'm going to run it. So, yeah. yeah, That's why you should support Flight Night on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah bro, sure. that, that's sure. where it's like, that's the playlist that 100%, you, yeah. you don't need to pay to get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what matters. Like, 100%. Yeah, those type of independent playlists that Spotify still supports, I think mm. is like the way forward. Um, And YouTube's just like fucking hidden miss, eh? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like if it hits yeah. the algorithm. Nah, yeah. I don't, know, like, I don't know what's happening with the YouTube algorithm at the moment, but... Oh, oh shit. Yeah, it's just like, I feel like it's just sort of, but I don't know, that could be just for me, you know, I mean, like, it could be different for other artists. That was like your song, your first song I ever came across before I met you, um, My Way. Oh, My Way, yeah, 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 yeah for fuck. sure. Yeah. That that just was on my YouTube page <laughs> almost every day for like a month, bro. I yeah, was like, yeah, holy yeah. shit. And then I clicked on it because I didn't think it was Australian Yeah. at first. Like I just had never seen the name or anything. I wasn't involved in hip hop as much back then. Yeah. And then I just clicked on it. I was like, oh, is that Blacktown fucking train station? All day. And then, um, yeah, I was... That was on the YouTube algorithm, but now it's just like all these thumbnails and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's hard to push as an artist. It is, bro. Yeah, but I mean that's that, that's pretty cool in a way because it just shows that um there's a lot of people pop coming in. There's a lot of artists like getting birthed. Yeah, so organically and independent doing their thing out of our own backyard. So that's pretty cool. So sort of like, oh yeah, man. Like, yeah. There's a I don't know. Like you can see there's a competition. You know what I mean? To sort of you either get going or other people's just gonna pass you. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. yeah what yeah. would you say the pros and cons? We you, you were with the label back in the day, hey. Uh, just, just, just a little distributing label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a distributing deal with um, the area. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to What would you yeah. say, like, the pros and cons of being an independent artist would be then? Um, Because I think a label's pretty obvious. It's just, like, the freedom 
and then but the organization they offer it's like very much just the trade-off you know yeah, yeah for yeah. a label but in terms of being an independent artist yep. what would you say pros and cons are that you found at least in your experience mm. uh shucks it might be a bit hard for me to answer this one only because i feel like i haven't really been a part of a proper um recording label as an artist yeah i felt like um a distributing uh like like a distributing deal is i feel is completely different to uh like artists do you know what i mean yeah. um because artists come to management and all that stuff um i wasn't managed or i wasn't um what's it called under a proper label i was sort of just like a distributing deal you know so yeah. they helped me push and get my music out there so um but if i could see the pros and cons in it i think it would definitely be just like what we were speaking about earlier like a lot of freedom um a lot of trial and error amongst your team um you get to build your team from scratch um it's sort of like you know like i don't know like i know nowadays like people always go on this app or something and like they always like write it down on their phones like this would be my dream team for nrl yeah and yeah, they yeah. pick all a whole bunch of like solid players and they'll name their like 13 or however much the our team player like oh, 18 players i think yeah, yeah yeah whatever like they'll name the whole 18 they'll be like this will be my dream team you know and i think that's the cool thing that the, the fact that people have the power to pick and choose on who they want in their team and look at the team and think well like i'm happy like this team will dominate the whole game you know what i mean yeah that's the power that you have in starting something from the, from the scratch like you get to pick and choose or you get to sort of say yes and no's to things that you know yeah you can't say yes and no to and i think those are the the pros that they come with um kicking off a label or a collective net yeah. and um but like yeah i don't know i feel anyway yeah yeah it's a cool thing like i said but like this, this is nothing that um i've been in before like, you know i'm still learning along the way straight up and i'm still learning today you know but um that's the beauty of it too like learning the game um just i guess taking what you've learned in the past or on the journey and applying it to like your life now and I guess with this whole yellow line thing and um yeah just seeing where it goes you know mm. i never want to look back and think far like i wonder what it could have been like if i just yeah so i just that's why i just live my life like let's just see what it's going to look like you know if yeah. we do it now so that's our reason why we're going to move with it yeah so. yeah wise words bro wise words saying, yeah um now let's move on to fatherhood for sure music and mm. work life yes but it's fuck it I work a full time job, Hellos, yeah. and then I have a thing called Sporting Club Hellos, and I do like uh, videography for like mates and shit like that. For That's sure. not as full on, but like balancing that, I find hard. Yeah, I, I don't have a fucking child at home. Bear in mind, I don't yeah, have yeah. that many bills <laughs> to pay either. I'm fascinated as to how you do it, bro. Like, how yeah. do you how do you manage to balance it all? Oh man, I think yeah, just if you love it, you do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I think that's just the bottom line. Like, if you genuinely love it, you do it by any means. You know what I mean? So um. Obviously, I love my family, and I could never see them not eat, or I could never see them sleeping. I don't know, in some sort of street, or not any like on the streets, but just with another family or anything. Or like, I feel like with my family, they deserve the most. You know what I mean? And like, whatever I can give at the moment, that's how I'm gonna do it. And if that means going to get a nine to five, then I'm not gonna be too proud to get a nine to five. You know, and um, hence why I work. Like you said, like how how do I juggle up work, music, and family? Um, that's just how I do it, man. I think that's just my mindset and my heart, man. Like if 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 I love them, I do it. If I love it, I'll do it. So um, yeah, I think just being real, straight up, like being honest too. Like, ah, oh, bro, I get tired, bro. Like I'm tired, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah you gotta wake up. Like my shift, I, I start at six six in the morning and then I go to two p.m. Sometimes I rush home, you know, play with my son quickly and say hello to my wife. Shout out to my like my wife real quick too. Like she, bro, she's a soldier, man. Like she really holds it down. Um. What's it called? While I'm at working at too, you know? Or when I'm out doing like music stuff. Because yeah. sometimes. She's holding it down right now. Yeah, hundred like she's holding it down and I, I'm here doing this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes to, probably my wife too, but even other people, like they could see it as like, oh, like, these guys are just wanting to go out and hang out at the studio with the boys and that. But, um, and sometimes we do, we do. Don't get me wrong, but for myself, I always see this as work, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I see that if, if I'm coming here to do the podcast and it's gonna benefit me in some way, with this music career that I'm trying to kick off, or if, if it's going to help push my music stuff in any way where I'm going to see some sort of return on income, then I don't see it as like hanging out. I don't see it as going to the studio and kicking with the boys, even though it may be that. But um, yeah, my mindset and my heart going into the studio with the boys or Velaja, MK in it, um, as much as we laugh and joke around, I know that I'm there and I'm, I'm sort of, I treat it like work. Yeah. So yeah, like I treat it like, man, like, because like I said, I love it. Like, I love my family. I'd rather be home with my family. 
But I love this music too much to like, what's it called? Pass it all up. So I know that I'm doing this music stuff for them still. So yeah, um, man, sometimes, like I said, like my day looks like six to two shift, go home. And um, man, spend as much time as I can with my family and then get into the studio whenever I can. And then if it's not studio, it's like other meetings with other stuff. And then yeah, repeat, man. The day, sometimes, man, like 10 o'clock would be like an early night. Even though, like, sometimes I, I feel like i got to be in bed by 10 o'clock to wake up for 6 a.m., but sometimes it does go into midnight or 2 o'clock, and then, yeah, you run on two hours and get up and get ready for work again. So I think that's just the go, man, and this is, um, yeah, this is the life that I sort of asked for, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I like I did ask. Yeah, like no, no one forced me. Nobody forced me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody told me to go get a job. I could, I could not work a, work a job, but then that means that, well, maybe my family will eat less, you know? Maybe we won't have our own house, you know what I mean? So... It's sort of like, those are the things and the consequences that come of it. So, um, yeah, find what works for you and um, find that balance. Mm -hmm. The balance is very, like, important. So make sure you find the balance. Like, as much as time that I put into the music stuff, um, I try my best as a father and as a husband because I'm a father and husband, you know, before Miles and that too. Yeah. I, I, find, I find that i got to find balance in making sure that my wife gets the same time, making sure that my son gets the same time and um, obviously music and that too. Yeah, yeah. So. I think the studio thing is real good for the soul because, like, you just kind of, bro, you just kind of get to hang out. Yeah, and, and bro, I think that's the cool thing, man. Like, and like, I don't know, for some reason, um, it's just I don't know, it's such a blessing to me, you know. I hear, I hear a lot of boys like after work and that, or even boys I talk to, like, top it up with, you know, their their way of leisure or hanging out is like, man, I just want to smoke up, or I can't wait to drink on a weekend, you know, like, yeah. let's have a drink up with the boys. Like, that's their way of um, spending their weekend, the or yeah, yeah, you know, just feeling their free time with you know um outside of family and work but for me i sort of um yeah as much as i see this as work music stuff um this is my leisure man like i genuinely find peace and alone time in studio and, and making music delivering music to the world and um i find my sort of rest in that yeah so when i do that it's sort of like it's pretty cool yeah so. yeah yeah it's right it'd be it'd be so hard eh? like yeah. just to fucking I and on, on top of all that sorry like because i'm not even sure if you mentioned too but i am a youth leader too so like I do a lot of youth stuff and I take care of like the youth kids and that so good stuff bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's like um throughout the week too. So yeah, that's just uh man, that's it's all about the next generation for sure, man. Like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like being a family man, that's about raising up the next generation, raising up the kids, you know. The things we do, the sacrifices we make. Even for my music, I make music for the next generation, you know, like yeah. Yeah, my way is a big example. Yeah, hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. Even like, yeah. There's always head messages between a lot of these tracks. It's not something we just write up and think, oh, this will be a cool track to release and then we release it. Nah, there's definitely a message behind every track. Yeah, so. You say the youth is at the forefront of your music? Um, It's definitely an audience, yeah. Yeah. For myself, there's definitely an audience because it's like, yeah, like what what what, what good is my music going to do to like some old people, 50-year-old, 60-year-old people? Oh, like, sorry, sorry. My dad did like Please. your music. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Props. But actually, yeah, let me reword that. Props to everybody that do listen to my music, you know, but... Yeah. I feel like with the time that we are now and with the music that I'm delivering, I feel like it'll have a lot more influence, a lot more impact in the youth that's actually listening to the music now. And they can grasp and take whatever they can from these songs that get delivered to them. And sort of like, I don't know whether it inspires them or whether it pushes them to head the right direction or sort of rethink the decisions that they're going to make before they make it. If that's what my track's going to do to these young people, then that's that's... That's exactly the route, the path that I want to take with it, you know. So, yeah. I think that's why I sort of head with the youth, like being the audience. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, bro. Mm. It's good that you do that. I didn't know you did the youth leadership type of stuff. Yeah, 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 for How'd sure. How'd you get yeah. into that? Like, why? Well, why? Oh, bro. So obviously, like, just like a lot of a lot of the Islander Pacific Islander brothers and sisters, you know. Like, I, I was fortunate to be a part of a youth group back then, and obviously attending church and that. And yeah, it's just always been on my heart since then. Um, I don't know, just seeing. Just seeing when I was a kid, like 12, 13, 14, seeing that, um, looking back at it now as a, as a man, like, you know, that other elders, like 20, 20 years old plus, had time out of their day, could have been anywhere else, partying or doing whatever, but had time out of their day to come invest and come speak and come show me the ways of, like, you know, show me who God is and that, um, get a better understanding on life and that blows my mind, bro. It's like, far, like, I can't believe that we got this treatment. It's almost like gold treatment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're so lucky. And, like, I feel like we take that stuff for granted. Like, man, like, what the heck? Like, they could have easily passed us up, you know? 
And we could have easily fell into the streets or fell into any sort of way. But I'm so blessed that, um, yeah, there was people that went before us and showed us the way. And I think it's only right that we do the exact same thing and following that path, you know, of, man, like, if it's not for the next generation, if we don't build them up, man, then it's like, what are we doing it for? You know what I mean? Yeah, what are we doing it for? Because yeah. one day, eventually, I'm going to leave this earth, you're going to leave this earth, you know, and whatever impact or whatever influence we have on the ne next generation, that's how they're going to run it up. Yeah. So if we speak nothing but death and we show nothing but negativity in, in our actions and the way we treat each other, how do you expect good fruit to come out of the, the next generation? They're obviously going to follow follow suit, you know what I mean? So that's the whole reason why we got to yeah, be wise with the way that we, um, I don't know, just invest into these kids, the way that we show these kids, the path that we show these kids. That's what I strongly believe, man. And yeah, for myself, like showing God to these kids is like nothing greater than doing that, you know? So Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Back to the music, bro. I got a few things I want to ask you. For sure. What's next in terms of your steps? Are you thinking more single releases? Because I feel like it's cool for people to think. So you've come off a big EP. Yep. And you've just gone into a hood bars, which is a massive move for an Australian rapper. Yep. Shout out hood bars. Yeah. Then you've gone into a single release. Yeah. In terms of like just as a rapper right now, where's your brain at in terms of like where you want to go next? Oh, so I've definitely got the next three uh, three months rolled up. Yeah. So. What are you um, thinking? Oh, Singles? so. Um. There's there's gonna be. A, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny that I'm asking this. But when, when's this gonna be dropping? Like soon or later? Two weeks. Or two weeks. <laughs> It'll be a, a la, last week of June. So. For sure. Nah. Then we're gonna say it. yeah. So. The, the 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 next step is um obviously a tape yeah um with, with, with some some great artists yeah that's gonna be coming out full track tape and um that's gonna be coming out in the next couple of weeks Man. from there it's gonna be rolling out singles what's it called the tape yeah key reveal or not yeah let's <laughs> nah, I'm gonna really yeah so the tape's called not for everyone yeah, yeah. Man. so it's not for everyone tape you know what I mean and it, it, it's not it's not trying to be exclusive with the music that we make but it's just genuinely putting out there like you know like the way that you see me and the artist that you see me, this might not be that artist, you know what I mean? Like, you might not get the miles that you like the my way or best behavior. on drill? Nah, hey. man, drill, man. <laughs> nah, bro, drill, bro. You got to have a lifestyle for that. Nah, shout out to the bros. Nah, nah, I could never, man. Like, yeah, that just doesn't fit in my pocket. But nah, um, definitely exciting to do this Um, tape. Not for everyone tape. Um, Shout out to the bro that we're doing it with. And um, yeah, that should be coming out, rolling out in the next couple of weeks. And just a whole bunch of singles rolling out till then. And yeah. then, um, yeah, hopefully see some stuff with the collective, yeah. We'll see. What about an album? Is that playing in your head yet? Um, I feel like at the moment it's sort of just like just trying to be consistent and just um, focusing on a lot of single drops and that, build yeah. some noise in that and just see how we go with that. And then, um, yeah. Go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like, the biggest downfall with artists in Sydney or mm. Australia is like if they don't pop, like say, like say, take away like Lissy, 1-4, HP Boys. Like yep. if they don't pop to those levels, a lot of them aren't consistent enough um in their release of music for sure to like see the gains like chilling it fucking was rapping to no one for years yeah yeah, yeah before sure. he did that album stuff you know like mm. there's artists out there that have now popped off because mm. of consistency yeah and that's why like number one thing i think like hip-hop artists need to focus on and just artists in general yeah yeah for in, sure. like australia it's like a big downfall of our scene it's yeah, just yeah like, for consistency sure. and yeah. a lot of people get discouraged like for you, I don't think your best song is My Way, right? Mm -hmm. I say that with the biggest confidence. No, 100%. Yeah. It's a fucking anthem. Yeah, yeah. But like you could have easily got discouraged when you make a song and you think this is better than My Way, but then it doesn't get uh, like what My Way would have. 100%. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Millie really? Streams. Yeah. Yeah, Millie Streams. So you yeah. may release a song that gets 100,000, which is the 10th, and you go like, how does that even equate? Yeah. And some artists just drop it. Yeah, yeah. They just don't care. They For just sure. don't do anything. But like for yourself, you're just going back and back. So it's yeah. only a matter of time, eh? Ah oh, yeah, bro, and I I think that's the difference, bro. Like exactly what you said, and you know how you're saying like um that like some artists do that, and then they end up dropping when they don't see results. Then I think um they just gotta really think like were they even an artist from the start? You know what I mean? Because it's like yeah. that's the difference between artists and one hit wonders. You know what I mean? Like people actually try to do some songs to hopefully pop it off overnight or one year, but if you're in there for the longevity, and you really are here like with the right heart, with the right intentions, and you move correct, then um you would never question what the streams, are. you would never question your 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 plays on and, and, and how the release is going, you know what I mean? Like the way that you put it out. Of course, there's going to be some sort of like, oh, I'm a bit bummed that did, this didn't do numbers like this certain song and that. But I'm um, at the end of the day, bro. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to give it all up for that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And there's a lot of people like that's watching you, you know? Like, there's a lot of influence that you have without you even knowing. So, I mean, you sort of throwing in the towel, going back to your normal nine to five. That's cool and all, but like, just know that there's people out there that's still questioning, like, where's that person that I used to listen to, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's big. Um, do you know Alex Jones? 
from Melbourne. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Alex Jones. I feel so, yeah. Matt, that is a number one example. Yeah. He's like, <clears throat> people still to this day go, where the fuck is Alex 100%, Jones? 100%, yeah. And he's like, arguably bar for bar. Yeah. If you came up, anyone in this country came up against him, you'd, like, yeah. little white fella, who would have thought, but he just held his own and, but in hardly releases. Like, yeah. No one just knows where he but is. But see what I mean? Like, and it's about the impact that he's left on the, on the industry, you know what I mean? So, even though he doesn't do it, he might not, not ever do it again. But the impact that he's left and his name that he's sort of like built for himself, I mean, just goes to show you know how much how much could have been. Yeah. If he did kick on, you know. But shout out to him, yeah. He would have been. He would. Bro, I honestly think he would have been the biggest. Like mm. if he just stayed consistent, mm. he would have been because he would have. He was popping off the same time the UK was popping off. One hundred percent. So I think it would have aligned. Yeah. You know. You know how like chilling it and stuff got co-signed yeah, by yeah, like yeah. gigs and shit. I think Alex Jones would have legit just gone. Take Straight it alignment yeah. with, with the UK scene because he yeah. was popping off when I was in high school. So what's that? Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Him and Fracture. I'm very Fracture. No. Fracture's the English guy that lives oh, in true. Melbourne. The bold fella hopped on that Mitchos. St- do you do you know that scary like scary by Stormzy? Yeah. And then Mitchos the Menace did a remix of it. I know. Yeah. Mich- yeah. Yeah. Mich- the English fella on that. That's Fracture. Oh, true. We'll show you after. But yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for sure. Him and um, him and Alex Jones released at that same time, and then. Yeah, it kind of popped off. It popped off, but mm. they didn't really follow it up. Carry with on, yeah. And kind of, I don't know, bro. Mm. Gives me the shits, eh? Gives me the shits, but yeah, bro. As a fan, just yeah, hundred percent, yeah. As a fan, you're just like, oh, but then again, know. it's probably like their personal life stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? So that's like so Got to take it all into account, yeah. Who Elijah Yo put on? Shout out to my brother Soko, bro. Yeah, all day. Oh, I wish he just released more. Him and Ronan, bro. They were the first artists I ever linked with, eh? Before Fez, yeah. 2020, yeah. I went out to, um, fuck, what's it called? Oh, where Shelly's from? Reevesby. Riverwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reevesby yeah. and Riverwood. Yeah, like, yeah, so Rona was mates with um, Shelly, and we we're going to link with Shelly that night, and he right. just released a song. But we went out to Reevesby, and we just got food, did a photo shoot, all that good stuff. Yep. Um, and, like, bro, we got along like a house on fire. Oh, yeah. And then Soko just never really kind of kicked off with music. Mm. Like, same with Ronan. And <clears throat> Ronan's Playmaker did, like, 1.5, maybe 2 mil yeah. on Spotify. It's crazy. And round two with Elijah Yo was just massive on, yeah. like, all platforms. Nah, bro, so- Soka's, bro, he's, he's got something special, that kid, bro. Like, yeah, and I, I remember the days when Elijah was bringing him through, you know, sort of showing him the ropes and that. And, bro, this guy, like, I knew from the start, like, bro, that you could see the grittiness in him, you know what I mean? Yeah. This guy not not, not shy to voice his opinion through his music and that. And I think that's one thing that I've always respected about Soka. But, um, yeah, bro, shout out to the bro for doing his thing. And, yeah, man, hey, make sure you release some tracks, man. Like, yeah. this guy's got too many gems in the vault, yeah, so. God, shout out to the bro. Shit, he was showing me that night. That was... Three years ago now, bro. Yeah. Crazy times, eh? Three years ago. Almost to the day, eh? Mm. I think it was August 2020. Three I mean, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should see it now. Eh? It's crazy. Yeah. Um, tic- You know the TikTok samples in rap? Yeah. Do you rate them? Wait. You know, like Stop. those samples where like they get a tick beat off TikTok and then they kind of rap to it? Have you mm. seen that? Bro, to be honest, I'm not really big on TikTok, eh? So I'm really tapped into TikTok, yeah, yeah. right. Um, but, but, but. Expand, yeah, expand. Yeah, so there's like there's like songs that pop off on TikTok, right? Mm. So there's a song called Jealous by I Dress. Right. And that's like a band song popped off on TikTok. Then they'll use that as a sample and they'll rap on it as a sample. Right. And it's kind of like all these songs used from TikTok samples. Right. And rappers hop on them and they and it's like a trend type of thing to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, like as a rapper, traditional rapper that goes bar for bar, what do you think of all that type of stuff? Um where rappers just hop on a trend for the sake of it. Bro, like I said, man, like whatever you're gonna do to push your name, push your brand, and if that's gonna help in any way, then um, by all means, like do it, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I feel like there's just certain people that um that move different. For myself, I'm not too, and it's weird that I say this because obviously I'm on a podcast, I shoot music videos, but I'm not, I'm I'm a bit shy behind the camera. So like when it comes to TikTok moves and it, and the first thing I hear when I hear TikTok is like. You gotta do some sort of silly dance, you know what I mean, or something like. <laughs> and like, yeah, 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 it's weird. It's weird because like that's how I first remember TikTok. But looking at it now, and obviously like the way um, artists get picked up, the way that they push, and how viral you can go overnight, it trust me out, bro. Yeah, but even still, it's sort of like um, I don't know what it is. Maybe I need to jump on more and learn the game and that. But um, bro, I've gotten two deal, like two things happen off TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, from a distributing platform. Yeah. Uh, reached out to me for like um props, bro. Thanks, bro. Thanks. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. G. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, distributing platform reached out. I can't reveal the name of them. But, like, yeah, they reached out and just wanted to call me. So this guy from this distribution platform just called me. He's like, hey, I need your advice. We're yeah. not on top of rap at the moment. Uh. Um, 
we've seen your content. We need it. Like, so yeah, like your name was mentioned. And then like, I just went through, bro, I just went through a list of artists. I yeah, said, yeah. if you need them, get in contact with them. I'm, I'm not a manager. I have no management skills. Yeah. Um, but here's who I think, like, if you want to put an artist on your platform properly, sure. this is what you do. And then Red Bull, I'm happy. With, like, they sent me free stuff. Or yeah, I've seen that. And they like, yes, out. sir. Yeah, that was cool. Um, but I definitely want to leverage that connection in the future because I yeah, do want to yeah. do freestyle type of stuff. For sure. But um, Take Flight kind of Hayden Wings. Yep. He kind of Shout did, out to Take Flight, bro. He's doing things. Fucking yeah. go. Doing bitch, bro. Yeah. Fucking go. He kind of did what I wanted to do, which is kind of just give a beat to someone, let yep. them go. So once I saw what he was doing, which is like, he, and he does it so much better than I reckon I could have. I um I kind of went back to the drawing board. Like, mm. I want to release something in hip hop, bro, because that was my first break into this whole shit with yep. you guys, right? That yep. night. The amount of attention, content I got out of it. Yep. So I'm like, fuck, I don't know. So I'm thinking like a battle rap type of thing mm. where we get a, we hire out of, like a hire out of room, especially mm. like Common House. Yeah, 100%. And it's invite only. Yep. And then we give the beat to the person with 24 or like 12 hours left. Yep. Or six hours left. Yep. And then before, and peop, people in the crowd know what beat to expect. Yep. And then when they get there, like you have like two rappers go back and forth <coughs> off the dome yeah. and then just kind of go from there. You know what I mean? I yeah, don't know. I, I don't know. That'd just, be solid, bro. Yeah. yeah something yeah. real fucking raw because we don't have anything. No. Like, besides and it'll really bright. expose like a lot of... Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know exactly and, what yeah, I'm saying. It'll definitely <laughs> answer a lot of questions to a lot of people that follow the whole rap scene on music. You know, yeah. like, nah, this guy's got bars, this guy's got bars. But I mean, when it comes to that, yeah, it sort of exposes that. Yeah, like, fuck. Yeah. Well, my favorite rapper can't rap. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my rapper can't rap on top of my head. Oh, the top of my head, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's, it's cool, bro. It's, it's something refreshing that the scene needs, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And this whole back and forth stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. I, um, I like, fuck, bro. I, when people talk to me about rappers, so you'd know, like, I'd know a few rappers, right? Yeah, for sure. And people talk to me about, like, certain rappers, just, like, even globally, you yeah. can kind of like pick it straight away when you go through a rapper's catalogue that they don't have it off the dome. Yeah, for sure. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you can kind of tell with the way they structure it and then they can tell when you listen to like any other rapper, you can just kind of tell through if you go through their catalogue, they can get it off the dome. Like they are like bar for bar, they'll just go straight at freestyle, they can do it. Mm. And then the other problem is so many guys call a freestyle yeah. a freestyle when it's not a fucking no. freestyle. It's no. completely fucking 100%. rehearsed. It's definitely written, yeah. And it's like written, it's rehearsed and mm. then it's like – um reworded and it's gone over and it's revised yeah. it's like fuck we don't have freestyles anymore yeah and i i know a lot of rappers if i invited them on may not may not be their thing yeah partially yeah. because of nerves as well yeah they might like 360 was like what like one of the best day <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he yeah. even he had one um he went to america do you remember this one? Oh uh, no i haven't really so yeah like he, obviously him and Curse. i, I, were, like, I definitely the heard him of, and Curse was yeah something big yeah back then like, yeah so. that was like the biggest one ever right yeah but like obviously they could go back and forth. That would prove sure. they could do it. Yeah. But um he went to America for one. Oh true. And, and he couldn't get his words out. Fucked it up, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. So there's obviously that element of like people think, oh, they can't rap when in reality they're just nervous as shit. For sure. The beat's not suiting what's in their head. Mm. But I do want to do like three beats, yep. three trade-offs, two minute max, maybe. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Um, I want to do something like that where we get sponsors in. For sure. Make it a real event, get food trucks. Yes, sir. Food trucks, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there for the food trucks. <laughs> so one day <laughs> turn up for the rap show, stay at the food truck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, Just put some bars at the food truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so many ways to do it. And I was speaking with 7 before. Mm. Obviously, he has 92 World, which is like a... Shout out to the whole PV screen, right? They're really doing bits, yeah. Yeah, really doing yeah, their yeah. thing, eh? Um, and yeah, just kind of like going back and forth with him and the idea. For sure. Definitely yeah. a lot of planning to do, but something I really want to do for this show. Exciting, bro. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, oh, you'll be... F fuck, bro. You'll be getting the call, eh? <laughs> oh, make sure. Make sure you have the right number, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I reckon I'd chuck you one of those like good old American beats, oh, bro. Like, yeah, shook, boom like, back, like all day, or yeah. maybe like one of those shook ones. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, Mob Deep, sir. Mob sure Deep, you yes, sir. Or like a big L beat. Come I reckon you kill it on a big L beat. Legends, bro. Those guys. Yeah, it's, I reckon. Um, I reckon Selly would be. Selly goes hard, bro. Yeah, That's definitely. Yeah, he um, he sounds like Big L so much. Eh? I don't know if you hear it, but. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, you could definitely hear the influence in, yeah. the, in the way he raps and that. Yeah, it's like Lex. especially some some of those older older stuff. You could definitely ha hear the heavy influence. Yeah, what's your influence? Would you say, uh, with the way that I've been doing music? Yeah, or overall? Yeah, um, bro, like music. I don't know. I'll hear, he'll say like obviously it's definitely American. Hey, yeah, it's definitely West American Coast? influence. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think about it. Yeah, everything like West and East. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
I do like Biggie now. Obviously, grew up on Dre and everything too. Game. Biggie like, or Tupac? I like Biggie, bro. To be yeah, honest, yeah. Same. Um, yeah. I just, yeah. Everybody for themselves, man. But for myself, yeah, I listen to more Biggie than Pac. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, who would you say like what what is your main influence? Would you say it's like West Coast movement? Because your music, I can tell, is like the American. There's yeah, an yeah, American, yeah. Like, oh, taste to it. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I've definitely been influenced by um the American. American hip hop, you know, and it's weird because I've got people cross paths with me like in the last recent months or something, and they say like, bro, like, would you ever try rapping your accent? And I just laugh a bit, you know. It's like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I, I think in my in my head, like, what does this guy mean? And I said, oh, I, I do rap. Like, nah, nah, but if you rap in a proper Australian accent, and that's where they get it wrong, you know what I mean? Because I'm not from Australia. Like, I was born and raised in New Zealand, and then I moved here when I was a kid, obviously. But since I moved here, like, which was like nine or ten years old. In that nine and ten years that I wasn't here, I was listening to like Game, Nas, Fifty, Biggie. Like I was listening to a lot of that stuff, you know. And so by then, when I loved music and I came over here, I was really heavy influenced by them. So I sort of followed suit, yeah. And um, I think I've just been influenced by them the most, yeah. So yeah. when people question my music and then they said, "Bro, I didn't even know this guy was Australian, sounds American," or "Is this guy trying to put it on?" You know, it's, it's not me putting it on. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah, I've just been born into listening with them, yeah? Yeah. I feel like if I try to rap like Australians, I'll be putting it on. Like, then what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I get stuck in this ball where you thought I rapped Australian, I've tried it, and now what? You know, you yeah. ruined my career. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's sort of like, yeah. That's the um, whole reason why I do what I do, yeah. I feel like New Zealand uh, is definitely influenced. Influenced, yeah, for sure. By West Coast. Yeah, for sure. East, East as well, but yeah. West Coast sound. Um, yeah, 100%. Even, even Scribe. Yeah. Like, he was, I could tell, Savage as well. Yeah, yeah Savage. Poetic, mellow, like, you know, like a yeah. lot of boys from back there, yeah. Uh, and I believe Booyah Tribe was actually American, weren't yep, they? Yeah, yeah, They were... West, I'm pretty sure. They were West Coast, but maybe they were Polynesian. I'm not sure if they were... Someone. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they obviously had a massive influence. Yeah, yeah. It's the age-old thing of, yeah. oh, they look like, like they are my nationality, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And they were like the first. But yeah, I remember actually off what we were talking about, mm. our first podcast, we talked about Scribe. Yeah. And I, like a fucking idiot, yeah. said Scribe was like the OG of like um, Aotearoa music, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, bro, like all, all the brothers from Aotearoa and from, you know, even in Aussie that are from New Zealand, they were like, oh, hey, nah, nah yeah. so wrong, bro, <laughs> Booyah yeah. Tribe. And they just gave me all these names. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Fuck. Nah, it's cool, bro, because that, 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 that's that. Like you learn, you learn a lot yeah. more, you know what I mean, sir? So. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, I, I, and then I, um, I, can't, I can't remember this guy's name. I was talking to some guy at like an event. And he was from New Zealand. Mm. Um, he was a Kiwi. And he was just going like, oh, yeah, like this is all the influence. And he kind of just was like going like, oh, yeah, Scribe. And he gave me like exact names. He's like, Scribe sounds like this guy. And he's like, what well, you got to realize when we're growing up, it's American. Right. He's like, you could you could get any brother from New Zealand right now, right. even a girl, and they'll tell you one of their favorite songs of all time. So most probably like an Usher or a Nelly yeah. song, you know, like he's like, that's just what like was our thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can kind of see it coming out in for artists sure. from New yeah, Zealand sure. as well. Um, but yeah, would you ever do like a song with Savage or Scribe, like the bro, OJ Kings of New I'd Zealand? I love to, bro. I used to listen to them when I was a kid, you know, like when I was a little New Zealand kid, bro. When I used to live there, like, bro, I was South Auckland, them. hey, yeah, South Auckland. Scribe popped off, you know, like Savage, like Decepticons. I don't know if you know Decepticons, that was his crew of like my record on that, yeah. So, bro, like these guys were they were influenced, like, you know, like the same way that like maybe one four and have some that like lead the generation now over here, yeah, it's the same way they used to lead like the New Zealand kids back home, yeah. Yeah. They used to look up to them too, like uh, decons and that. Would Scribe be like, or like Savage or Decepticons, would they yeah. be like, would that freak you out a bit as well? Because that's like your childhood kind of being a treat. 100%. Because it's, it's like, um, what's it called? Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it always goes back. Like, it may it may not seem like a massive collab, but to myself, bro, I still see myself that's as a that. fucking huge collab. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, I mean, like, you know, with, with people that would listen from here, oh, right. they'd probably be like, oh, man, Mine's got a song with Scribe, or Mine's got a song with like yeah. Savage. But that's what they see it as. To when if, if I was to get a song with like, say someone else, I don't know, someone that's popping off here, say like one four or something, they'd be like, bro, what? Like Mars, is, you know, they treat it a lot more different. Yeah. But um, yeah, just just what what Savage and the New Zealand rap rap scene meant back then, like Decepticons and that, meant a lot more to me than what it would mean to other people. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd love to see Scribe back rapping. I listen. I listen to Dreaming almost every day. Yeah. One of the best. Like he's crazy, bro. Bro, what's your biggest cosign? Have you copped a big cosign yet? No. Do you know what cosign is? No. It's like when like someone like puts you on publicly or like shouts you out. Yep. So mine would be uh, Ty, 
two of us, I wore a Hellos hat in a video. Oh, right. Have you had like anyone shout out your music or like be listening to music and they message you type of thing? Like anyone super famous? Super famous? No, not really, bro. Like, I haven't really. No. It depends. Like, what do you mean by super famous? You're like, like you would talk about even Australian influence on it? Yeah, or just like even super famous to you or super famous to the area type of thing or Sydney. Obviously, you know one four and one not, but like, yeah. is there anyone like out there that you were like kind of shocked by that kind of messages you about your music or follows you or anything like that? Oh, what a crazy question! Cause off the top of my head, like I'm sure there's been a lot of moments like that, but um, yeah, something's just not coming into mind at the moment. I definitely had moments like that though. I've definitely had moments. Yeah, like yeah. Like one of my moments, bro. Like it doesn't matter the level, but like one of my moments was um Soka. Because right. that was the first artist to ever respond to like a DM of mine. Right. And then another one was being in the studio with yourself, Fez, mm. Red Honcho, AF. That was like a co-sign to me because it was like these guys put on Hellos yeah. merch and then they we made videos and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then like co-signs obviously as you start to develop as your own character and business, yeah. like they can obviously get bigger. Like tied to a vast yeah. at the moment obviously is Australia's biggest sporting yeah. export. Like him wearing my stuff. Obviously it's a bit of a cheat code that I'm here but yeah. like. Yeah, that is like a massive... Um, oh, still, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. But yeah, I was wondering if you'd had any because I thought, fucking, there's got to be someone over in New Zealand that's probably shared you out or something like that. Bro, there's definitely... I don't know. We don't pay attention to it much. No, I, I, like, to be honest, uh, like, I'm I'm trying to think of it. So if I'm trying to think this much about it, then I don't think it's either happen, it hasn't happened yet or or maybe it happened and I sort of just can't think of it this on my head. But small things like, say, like, uh, what's it called? Like, um... Say, like, shout out to my record. Like, I'm not sure if a lot of people would know my record, you know, but my record was, like, OG. Like, he was a, a part of the crew was Savage, Decepticons and that. So he was, like, bro, like, he was solid, like, bar for bar, too. Like, yeah. when it comes to freestyles and that, like, bro, you should go search his stuff out. Like, yeah, different, different um, caliber, bro, like, this guy. And he shared, like, he listens to your music? Yeah, well, just because, obviously, like, my old man used to do music and that back then, too. So, yeah. I, like, like I said, I don't know if that's a cheat code, too, you know what I mean? But just the fact that I used to listen to his stuff as a kid at school and that, on the Walkman and that too, and then, like, um, seeing that he just shows love, yeah, is like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? It's still like, yeah, it's yeah. like it's still a well moment for me. Like, far, yeah, like yeah, I, I still get a little, of, I don't know, a bit of like a far. That's mad. Like you know, like this is the bro I used to listen to as a kid, and now he's listening to my stuff. Or like he gives props, like just sharing my video. Or, I don't know what it is. Like, any small things like that, like. It may um, seem so small, but yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Yeah, I, I'd never take this stuff big, for granted. It's big man. to you, bro. That's 100%. the same for me. There's yeah. things that are big to me that no one could yeah, understand yeah. or give and a fuck And it may seem so, so so minimal to other people, but yeah, no, nah, it's, it's definitely Yeah, it puts a achieve. smile on your face when 100%, you're like, yeah. in the studio at like 2 a.m. I'm in my bedroom editing videos at 12 a.m. and something pops up. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's why I do it 100%, for you, you know? 100%, 100%. Like, yeah. um, reminds you like why you're on the, yeah, on the journey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, bro, you used to dream of that stuff as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, I used to listen to Miracle back then. I used to be far. Be solid to meet this guy. Yeah. And to look down like 20 years later, this guy's commenting saying, bro, solid stuff also, like, you know, sharing my stuff. It's like, don't ever take that stuff for granted. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how long it takes. Like the moments there, they happen. Like, bro. Yeah. Actually give props to the people that, you know, you used to look up to and that thing. Yeah. When they show love, yeah. They I mean, show love got a question for you. We mentioned it before. Yo. You moved here at age 10. Yeah, something like, yeah, 19, yeah. Yeah, right. What's it like at that age just moving to another country and completely to a new culture and just starting from there um it was different bro yeah it was, it was hard different. yeah because I'm, I'm not gonna lie like um that was my first time ever leaving New Zealand. Yeah. yeah so like when i left new zealand it was sort of like uh as a little kid like you don't think nothing of it but like it's just like you know for sure that you're jumping on a plane going to australia and you're leaving everything behind you know what i mean and as a little kid it's sort of like it's nothing important but it's like far like i'm never gonna see my friends again never gonna see my school like except you did yeah, yeah, well, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Bro, that, I came full that circle. It's crack up, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, bro. Nah. What are we talking about? Malay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, primary school. Yeah, in shout out South to Bruce. Auckland. Yeah, it's crazy. So when we seen right. each other here, it's like, what the heck? But like, exactly like how you're saying, like you know, you said like, like we leave New Zealand, and come here, and then come into a whole new life. It's funny that you say that, bro, because it's like I left New Zealand to come back to New Zealand. Like when I <laughs> like when I came to Mount, I was like, far. Like this is the same, if not worse, than. Where I came from, you know what I mean? And it's funny because, bro, like, the, the way that people used to paint Australia back then was like, I don't know. Like I almost, out back in kangaroos and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bro, like Steve like, Irwin's. Yeah, I can't wait to see, like, clean streets and Hollywood sort of thing, you know? 
and then yeah, oh, like a, the opera house and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, like like just yeah. or just even clean streets in general. Like I used to think, wow, Australia is such this. Yeah, wow, like, I can't wait to go there to see what the streets are like, and I come here and like, the streets is exactly like from where I came from. So it's like, wow, yeah, wasn't too bad, you know. Man, I was like, oh, I came from home to home, you know what I mean? So I feel like we we fit pretty well, yeah. And then I was like, okay, like this is a bit weird. So maybe I'm gonna see a lot of new people, Australians, and I went to school, and I didn't realize there were so many Islanders here still, and I was thinking. Wow, that's crazy. Like, I think we'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Then obviously, like, seeing the bros, RJ and that, I was like, wow. What are they yeah. Sort of clicked. Yeah. So seen, what, seen a couple more boys. Why, like, why did the family want to come over? Was it just employment opportunities type of thing? Oh, bro, it was, it was changed, man. Definitely changed. Yeah. Like, um, obviously, mom and dad, like, they, they, they had to change some things, make yeah. some sacrifices to uh, be better for themselves. Yeah. For, for us too, because we were very young. Yeah. I was eight, nine years old. So, my older brother was 11, yeah, and, like, you know, obviously they had to make that decision then, like, if we either stayed there, like, um, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know where we would have been. Don't know where this music stuff would have been, yeah. I always remind myself, my nonna and nonna had to make a sacrifice from Italy after, yeah, yeah, the yeah. World, after World War Two. you know? Yeah, exactly. They had to make that sacrifice to get, like, fuck, like. Yeah, but, and, like, I think, yeah, like, they, they they had to make that decision so that we could live the life that we live now, yeah, so. yeah. I can't put it yeah, any There's more kids up in the mountains where I feel like slapping them over the fucking back of the head. Like, you'd know the mountains. You've been up there. <laughs> yeah, There's no, sure, yeah. nothing, no trouble. There yeah, should yeah, never yeah. be any trouble up there. They walk around. A and bunch of gang up there. Yeah. <laughs> gang. I couldn't fucking punch a cat, bro. Yeah. It's still enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, some of them um, come from ethnic backgrounds like myself. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just feel like, like, you just want to scream at them, like, fuck, you have no idea how much sacrifice went into getting into this 100%, country. Yeah. Like, you are literally in the greatest country on earth. Yeah. You don't get another shot like this. Mm. I feel like a lot of young people forget it as well. Eh? 100%, man. If I was in youth work, it'd be something I emphasize as well. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't think you guys realize yeah. where we come from. from For sure. E everywhere, from anyone from Europe, from Africa, from North mm. America, South America. Yeah. Like, this is... This is it. And so many kids just throw it away. For, for sure, bro. Or for all that and it's bullshit. crazy, man. For like, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Hopefully they get an understanding on yeah. the importance of and why man. the people that went before them did what they had to do so that you could live the life that you live. Even though like some people like could act up and be like, oh, what do you mean live the life that I live? You know? yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. still poor. I'm still being like, man, you're alive, man. You know, like, yeah. you, you don't know what your parents or the people that went before you were going through, you know? Yeah. You're yeah, literally in the top 3% of... Um, like your top three percent richest person in the world if you're living in Australia, I'm mm. pretty sure. That's how rich this country is, like just off the bat. Like 100%. you think about yeah, poverty overseas is yeah. nuts. Um look, we'll wrap it up, bro. It's getting late. For sure. But I wanted to ask you one final piece of advice. Or a few, actually, a few. Yeah. How do you find what's your number one piece of advice actually for like going into fatherhood, like there'll be a lot of fellas around my age that listen to the show around in yep. their mid twenties, you know, and over the next year or two, they'll most probably start to make their way into a family with their missus, you know, and they'll start to have their first child. Yeah. What's like your biggest piece of advice for like taking on fatherhood? Um, Yeah, bro. Just, you can do it, man. Like, yeah, that's, that'll be my main encouragement, man. Is like, you can do it. So every single doubt that you have in your mind, like get rid of that, man. Like, you know, like people that are stepping into fatherhood or that, that, stepped into fatherhood or that's looking at you know obviously moving with it um you can do it like you can overcome it um obviously like be be the man and be the best role model that you can be not only to your kids like but to your partner too your better half like learn man like learn everything along the way and don't be afraid to like a lot of fathers um they doubt that and they step away or they run away from it or they turn into anger they turn to anger because they know for themselves that they're dealing with something that's personal and whether that's doubt, like, oh, like, I need to hang out with the boys more. No, oh, nah, like, I can't do this. Like, I'm still too young. Um, your baby's there. It's your baby, you know, like, really run it up, bro. And um, that baby's life in 10, 20 years' time, like, I don't know. It's, it's, I just feel like it's very important for that baby to look back and know that, for oh, my dad gave me the best. Like, my yeah, dad he gave, gave me my it all, his you know. All. Yeah. Despite, despite how young you are, whether you're 15, 16, 17, or just a man now, you know, like, if you're going to have a kid, really run it up, man. And, like, yeah. Make sure you be the man of your house. Um, lead by example. Live it. Don't don't speak it. Live it. Um, yeah, and just 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 be the head of of the home, bro. Yeah. Were you nervous when like obviously you feel with excitement and love sure. when your first child comes along, um, your baby boy? But like, was there an element of like nervousness of 100%. like I have no idea what? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, bro. like one hundred percent. Like so for myself, all I've known is like, um, uh, like when I go to work and that like I've only known that fire when I make money like you know obviously pay board and whatever and then bro, I get to splurge the money on myself you know and yeah. that's all I've ever known for like my whole life since I've started working 
since 18, 19, whatever. So when I had a kid, it's sort of like, this all changes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not about me no more. It's about my family. Yeah. And like my sacrifices um, and the things that I want, I, 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 I can't, I might not be able to get it now. Like, you know what I mean? Because I got a kid to look after. And not only that, like I got a wife to look after. I got a home to build now. And like I said, like, and we talked about it from the start, like this is the life that we asked for, man. And I think that's why it made the transition a lot more smoother. Because knowing um, that I had these things in place, knowing that I had a good wife, and knowing that going into fatherhood, um, everything was already set in place for me to move in the right way. Um, that's why I moved a lot more easier than what I, I mean, should have or could have, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, um, but definitely, man, definitely a lot of stress and a lot of, um, what's it called, challenges. A lot of challenges behind closed doors, yeah. Like when the lights are off and, you're, and your wife's sleeping and your fresh new babies, they're sort of like, man, man. That's that's times where I feel like, and I'm 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 speaking real now, bro. Like you know, mm. like this I feel like shout out to the brothers that's watching too. Like this is times where we we sort of sit back as like um just as fathers as men, and we sort of just revisit our whole life, man, and the things we do, the and why we do what we do, um the sacrifices, and bro, I think just reminding yourself that it doesn't matter if people don't see it, bro. Like, but the things that you do and why you do what you do for your family, that's all that matters, man. And just keep it pushing in. I think always keeping God in the center. Of my life, bro, it definitely like keeps keeps me grounded and everything. Yeah, yeah. And hence why um yeah I live this blessed life, man. I may not have it, or I may not freaking own a home. I may not have the best, you know. Yeah, but bro, this is this this is a lot more than what I yeah I believe could have had, you know. So yeah, wise words, brother. Definitely Very wise words. Yeah, definitely blessed. Um, second of all, creativity wise, and I feel like a lot of young men, yep, they need a creative outlet. For sure. And a lot don't have it and they put other things in front of it like, I don't know, like gambling, yeah, drinking, yeah, that type of shit. Mm. For any young fellas getting into their creative outlets, whether it be fucking hip-hop, whether it be like they're streaming, they're gaming online yeah. or they're like they draw, yeah. they paint or they um, – anything, bro. What's your biggest piece of advice from someone who's rapped for the best part of a decade, even mm. longer? Mm. What's your biggest piece of advice for just like taking that step into like trying to actually put your, your all into it? Bro, I would just say, yeah, just just shoot for it, bro. Go for it. Back yourself 100%, man. And um, especially with challenges that come along the way, like bro, just, yeah, block the noise. You know what I mean? Just take whatever you need to take and whatever you don't want to take, bro, you can leave it. You know, um, what's it called? In terms of like dreams and like um, just careers that people want to push into, whether it's rapping or, you know, like I, I notice a lot of young rappers, um, they get influenced and all of a sudden they want to become a rapper. And I don't know if that's just because it's the popping thing. But um, no, everybody has to be a rapper, you know what I mean? Like there's other great careers out there where you can feed your family well and own and buy yourself a home and get yourself a car, you know what I mean? Or off other careers that, and even talents that you might have in the back of your pocket and you don't even know, you know? But the reason why you don't know is because you're too blinded by following and sort of sussing out what the scene is doing or what the end is, like, you know, like following the wave. But really, um, I would say find some alone time and really... um look back at the talents that you do have or what you've been blessed with and move with that, man. Chop away at it um, one step at a time. Don't give up overnight, you know what I mean? Actually see how you can go and give it a big crack, man. And the worst that could happen is, but you might fall, but you, you definitely gonna look back and know that fire. At least I'll give it a crack, you know? Yeah, so, yeah th that would be my piece of advice, man. Just Is that, is that the answer to your uh, question? Yeah, it's yeah. a great answer, bro. Yeah, sir. I just wanted to let you talk. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, you've done well, bro. That would be my piece um, of advice, yeah. We'll wrap it up now. For sure. Where can people find you? Um, all over social media platforms, man. Follow my Instagram, mrvz.yl. And um, yeah, Marv's MRVZ on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, all that. And um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, a lot of work coming in and yeah, a lot of features. Most underrated in the country, Exciting. man. You haven't <laughs> listened, bless, you bless, should bless. already. A ridiculously yeah. talented artist. My uh, God, my God. Time we is due. Yeah, yeah, all day, man, but. We keep it going, bro. Yeah. We keep pushing. Yes, I'm keen for the EP. It'll be sick. Oh, 100%, bro. I'm keen for you to hear it. Yes, yeah. sir. Thanks for hopping on, bro. I appreciate it. See you next week. Bless.